Welcome to FPTV New Releases, uh, where it's my pleasure today to be joined by Bill Roseman, the SVP and Head of Creative at Marvel Games. How are you, Bill? Andrew, I'm awesome. I want to say hello to you and hello to all the true believers watching out there. Uh, and, and to thank you for having me on your show. And, and it's my pleasure uh, to be here and talk about Marvel and Marvel Games. Two subjects very close to my heart, make mine Marvel Games. So, um, Bill, can you please take us through your history at Marvel and your current role there? Well, I was very, very lucky. I, I joined Marvel right out of college, or as you would say, university. Uh, and I began as a freelance writer, and I wrote for a magazine called Marvel Age, um, and which was a, a magazine I used to buy. So it was a thriller. And so I wrote for that, and then I joined Marvel as an assistant copywriter, uh, writing for their Marvel sales catalog, um, and then stayed with that for a while, and then got into marketing, and then I even invented an online persona called Your Man at Marvel uh, to bring you the uh, info straight from the House of Ideas, and had a nice run at Marvel, and I was um, writing comics, uh, and that was great, and then I actually left and worked for the Distinguished Competition for a couple years, worked for DC just to see what it was like across the street, because uh, I grew up, of course, uh, loving Batman, Superman, and all comics. I then came back to Marvel. I was invited back to be a full-time editor and was lucky enough to um, launch the Nova book. And then I had a hand in putting together the modern day Guardians of the Galaxy um, and had a great run on the Marvel Comics books uh, for a, uh, a, a, a great run. And then five years ago, uh, my boss, Jay Ong, reformed the Marvel Games team. And he was looking for uh, not necessarily a video games expert because he was going to gather people from uh, the video games world who had experience making games. Uh, what he needed was a Marvel expert, someone who could just bring um, a cumulative knowledge of Marvel, uh, not only as a fan, but someone from the inside who understands how does Marvel work? Yeah. What do we um, uh, prioritize? What are key pillars to our belief system? Um, and someone who could, you know, be an evangel. Uh, evangelist for Marvel and and teach um, not only in uh, in our team but when we uh, reach out uh, to the great video game studios around the world someone who could um, just you know explain what is so awesome about Marvel and you know that's what I've been doing all my life so I said sign me up so that's kind of analogous to to the role that Feige occupied at uh, uh, um, uh, in the, within uh, Marvel production in the Marvel movie um, you know, ident until he became sort of an all-powerful, you know, Galactus-type figure. Um, yes. It, it, it's, but it's a similar you know, remit, right? Yeah, and, and, and something that um, Marvel Studios has done so well, um, and, and, we, and we love our friends uh, in studios, is that they went back to the core material. You know, on, on the set of um, uh, uh, Infinity War and Endgame was a copy of the Infinity Gauntlet trade paperback with all these post-it notes in it. And what I love about uh, the, the, the movies is that you can find moments and images that are specific panels from comics, um, but they're presented in a new way to someone that just, it look, looks great and it works. Like when you think about Captain America Civil War and you have Iron Man and Captain America together from the side, that's, that's right from the cover of Civil War. And that is something that, um, that we like to do at Marvel Games is, when, whatever the game is, but when we think about what we're here to talk about today, Marvel Spider-Man and Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, um, uh, in working with Insomniac, in working with Brian Horton um, uh, on Miles and Brian Intihar on the first Spider-Man game, uh, they were the creative directors on those games, we go to the core material and it starts with just talking. We just talk about who is Miles? Let's, let's look back at, at the, the comic books that he's been in. Who is he? What is he about? Uh, what is his story? Um, and then what is, who is our Miles and what is our story? Um, but we have to go back to the core and we find, um, we find uh, stories, uh, issues, moments, panels, covers, um, and, and the animation team does as well. And you'll find, you'll find throughout the game uh, specific covers and moments that are translated into action. And it's really an inspiration of, well, how does Miles move? Well, let's look, let's look to the core. It's here. Uh, the, the genius creators have done a lot, of, a lot of the great work. So we'll use that as a, as a springboard to everything we create. Um, but then we have, to, we have to respect the different mediums. That's number one. And that was a big uh, driving force for us at Marvel Games is respect video games as video games. 
We're not going to do adaptations of films or cartoons or even adaptations of comic books. And we may love them. We're going to make the best video games we can. Now, inside that, there may be what you call Easter eggs. I just call them building blocks. You're going to find building blocks of the Marvel Universe. So in Marvel's New York, you're going, to, you're going to see the Daily Bugle, and you're going to see Avengers Tower, and you're going yeah. to see the Sanctum Sanctorum, because that's what you'd expect to see in, in Marvel's New York. Um, but then we invite you to then discover and learn more about, like, who, well, I see this building with the sign Nelson and Murdoch. Who, who are Nelson and yeah. Murdoch? If you know, then you know. If you don't know, someone will, like, let me tell you. Let me tell you who Matt <laughs> Murdoch is. He's Daredevil. Um, so, and, and that's where the comics I grew up on and you grew up on they, they stan and the gang always invited us to learn and they yeah. invited us to step up and look and read more and learn more and that's um how we view marvel games and everything we create a, a, around them is we may we may think that you know our game spider-man miles morales may be your first marvel experience ever and it should have all the information in there of who miles is and what's his story and then have hints of the greater marvel universe and hopefully in playing the game it's so fun you say to yourself, Marvel is awesome. I want to learn more. You know, what else can I play and read? Yeah, I think that is uh, such a smart way to do it and such a beautiful way for it to be for the fans. I think, uh, I think it's uh, very cleverly conceived, but for a real reason, you know, for a real benefit for everybody who's a fan of this, you know, amazing layered universe, you know, which I've been, as we were talking before on camera, I've been a fan of, you know, for 50 plus years, you know, and uh, that's how rich it is, I think. That's the amazing thing about Marvel for games, for movies. There's just so much to draw upon. Uh, and, right. and on, on that note, uh, Bill, were you, I, I, were you, when were you first introduced to Miles? Was it, was it literally when he first appeared in the Ultimate Universe? When, when did you first become aware of him? Yeah, the first time um, I became aware of Miles is when he was being created in, in, at Marvel. I, I, was, yeah. I was there at Marvel. Uh, I'm working as an editor. and. Um, you know, the, the, the desire was, um, you know, how, when you look to the Marvel comics, um, Spider-Man has gotten older, right? Yeah. And, and, but at its core, again, we always think about the core, the Spider-Man story was always a coming of age story. You know, what is it like to um, discover you have powers and then having to make real decisions with them, which is what happens when you come of age. Um, and in the, in the main line, Peter had gotten older. And, and that's where the, the, uh, the impetus to create the ultimate line was, is how can we get back to that young Peter Parker um, who was in high school and experiencing these things for the first time? Um, and so then you had that run. And, and then um, and it took off like wildfire. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis and, and Mark Bagley were able to recreate the Spider-Man story in a way that hooked even the longest Spider-Man readers. I wanted to know what was next and how are they going to tell the story their, their own way and what twists and turns would they add to the Spider-Man mythos. Um, and, and so that went on for a number of years. And then it was, well, okay, uh, what can we do different now? And then, and, and then again, get back to that young, that young Peter and make it different and new. Um, and and uh, Brian was very interested in how can we tell a Spider-Man story um, and maybe have a Spider-Man that um, is different from Peter Parker, who happens to be a person of color. And so um, in talking internally with Marvel and working uh, with the team there, they debuted Miles. And I remember when the, 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 I remember the day when the comic came out and we received a lot of mail. Um, and at first we received some hate mail. Yeah, people just saw the headlines and without reading the comic. And they wrote things like, why, why did you turn uh, Spider-Man black? I remember I, I received one email and, and, and it was both. It was it was a dad saying, "Why did you kill Spider-Man and, and replace it with with this new person?" Um, with sort of an undercurrent, I sense that he didn't like that it was a person of color. And he said in his email that he was going to take uh, when his school when his boys got back from school, he was going to take them out back and burn all their Spider-Man comics. And so I wrote to him and I said, "Look, uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to buy this new comic, but just know that." Um, Peter Parker is still alive in, in, on, on our prime earth. This is Peter from a different reality. Um, so you still have your Peter Parker. Um, and I said, look, you don't have to, you don't have to buy this new comic. Uh, I said, many people will, many people will find a Spider-Man that looks like them, that they can relate to. Um, I said, but 
just as a favor for me, don't burn your kids' comics. Your kids won't remember this replacement Spider-Man. They may, may never remember that, but they will remember you burning their comics. Um, and that's a negative thing they will, they will carry with them, not a, not a positive thing. Um, he didn't reply. Uh, I don't know if he, what he did. I hope he didn't burn the comics. Hopefully he was bluffing. And hopefully maybe I even inspired him to check out the new comic. And I think um, when people actually read it, and I just read headlines and read the comic, they found a Spider-Man that they really liked. Yeah. Um, and after receiving hate mail, uh, we started receiving positive mail. Yeah. And I remember one from uh, a young woman who said, thank you. Uh, she said, my little brother finally has a Spider-Man that looks just like him. And that made it all worthwhile. Yeah, and, and that, that, that is an amazing thing. And I think, uh, you know, I, m my take on, I was a big fan of the ultimate version of Peter Parker. So I was, as a reader, I was dismayed when, it, when he died. But while also recognising that's because of my emotional connection with him, because they told such a beautiful story. As a story, it was fantastic. And I think what you've been able to achieve um, with with Spider-Man, with the character of Miles Morales, you collectively Marvel as a whole, as a result of doing that, has been very important actually, and and I think that's the real resonance of it, you know, and and, and of course Peter Parker, A, a he's still there, B he's a fictional character, and he's always going to be there, you know. Miles Morales has only broadened out the universe, and, and for all the for all the reasons that you've said. It's just been such a great thing to see happen. Now, I'm curious about the relationship between the new Miles Morales game and the, um, and the novel that we're talking about, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Wings of Fury by Brittany yes. Morris. How, how, did, how do those two link together? And how did well, that um, process creation it, work? I'm glad you asked because it, it goes all the way back to um, the creation of the first game. Marvel Spider-Man. And in, in, in creating that, we were um, providing a ton of ref to Insomniac. And so we gave them uh, uh, digitally a full run of Amazing Spider-Man and also of Ultimate Spider-Man. Because we were talking about, in, in our game, our Peter Park was in his young 20s and we wanted to talk about that coming of age. And so we shared uh, the Miles Morales run to show, you know, here's this young Spider-Man. And uh, Brian Intihar came back to me and said, Bill, everyone here at Insomniac loves Miles. Could we put him in the game? And I thought, yeah, as long as there's a, a clear, good story that makes sense, let's talk about it. And we knew we didn't have time to do sort of the Spider-Verse story, to talk about different realities and, yeah. and all that. That's not what our experience was about. And then we just decided, can't Miles just be in our reality? Sure, why not? And so Miles was just in our game story and he got into the kind of the orbit of Peter Parker and ended up getting bit by the spider. And at the end of the first game, realized that he had powers. Um, and in making that game, we decided, Oh, um, it'd be really fun to, to work with our friends at Titan and do a novel and do a prequel novel that led right up to the, the first game. Um, and that was such a great experience. And uh, that was called Marvel Spider-Man hostile takeover written by David Liss. If you haven't yeah. read, read it yet, Go check yeah. it out. It's an awesome read. We'll link um, to it. Uh, we'll link to it from this video as well as Wings of Fury. It's it's, it's a great read. It, it, um, David Liss is a, is a great friend of mine, um, a great mystery writer, and he um, in the story leads uh, 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 reveals a lot of things and plants seeds that that come to bloom in, into the game. So it connects so nicely right to the game. And so the same idea was was uh, came about here when we did Miles uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales the video game. We said hey, let, let's work with our friends at Titan again and let's publish a prequel novel. Um, and let's uh, reveal some things that happened before the game that connect right up to the game um, and, and give people who, who, who have played the game and, and, and want to see, well, when did Genki learn about Miles and his secret identity? And, and uh, wow, and Miles and, and Rio had to move from, from Brooklyn to Spanish Harlem. How did that happen? And, um, and so... Um, we, we began talking about what, what could this story be, and um, uh, our great friends at Titan, you know, did an author search and said, "What would you think about Brittany?" And um, as soon as we, um, I did some research on her, I said, "Oh my gosh, she's perfect. such a great talent! Such a great talent!" Brittany was, I think, in many ways, born to write this novel. 
Um, she was a fan just like us uh, of, of Marvel and, and she uses that experience in her writing and, and she brings that, um, that authentic voice and, and, and that love for, for Marvel and for Miles. And that's what's very important. Whenever we create anything, whether it's a game or a prequel novel, number one, um, and I learned this just at Marvel, uh, learning how, to, how, how we create comics and how we work with, with all of our talent is, number one is you wanna find the right creators that have that internal passion for the character in the story. And, and connect them to those characters that they love. And then once you do that, a lot of times you can step out of the way and let them tell their story. Um, and that's where the magic happens. And, that, and that's truly what happened here. We, um, uh, Brittany was brought on board. She happened to be a huge Miles fan um, and, uh, and just came up with an amazing story that wove in all these points leading up to the game and has written a novel that I think everyone who's playing the game or, or haven't even played the game yet um, can read this novel and it will get you excited about who our Miles is uh, in the game and will tee you right up uh, to play the game. Fantastic. Um, I, I couldn't think of a better endorsement than that. And, and the Wings of Fury, uh, you can order from the links attached to this interview. Now, Bill, before we leave you, what are you working on at the moment? Well, oh, gosh. that you can tell me about, which I suspect yeah, if will not I tell be all you what, I'm what I'm working on every day. Then, then Nick Fury is going to dive through the <laughs> window behind me and uh, uh, take me out. Uh, um, what can I say? Well, you know, I mean, at, at Marvel, um, you know, we are uh, hard at work at a whole portfolio of games, and we want to we want to bring you games however you want to play them. So um, whether that is console games like Miles Morales, um, uh, or whether that's mobile games, we're gonna create a game for you. Um, so I can say, gosh, right, actually today, um, the character Kate Bishop, uh, uh, the new, all new Hawkeye, okay. debuts in our Marvel's Avengers game. Um, and right. that's just another way of, um, at games, how we are trying to introduce the world to some of this new generation of characters. So we've seen Kamala Khan, in Marvel's Avengers. Yeah. We've now seen um, Miles yeah. in, in Spider-Man, and now here's Kate yeah. uh, uh, in, in Avengers. Um, uh, and, and oh, and there's a, isn't there, there's a Titan Marvel's Avengers book you can read it well. well that there is a prequel. indeed, yeah. That's a prequel to the game. Um, and that you was You were fun. doing a great job of queuing these books up, mate, because you can link to well, that from this videos well they're so interview. they're so fun to create because we get to go through the marvel catalog and so in marvel's uh, avengers prequel you'll find um the zodiac our version of the zodiac yeah. and that was a, a group of villains that i loved when i was a kid me uh, all these uh, villains based upon the astrological sign yeah, we were like how, how can we how can we translate that in, in, into a modern story um and so here in in wings of fury uh the wings it's, it's no real spoiler to say that um that involves the, uh, the vulture. And we went into, um, uh, uh, again, into the vault and looked at the core material and, and there's a, a Miles Morales uh, character, sometimes uh, antagonist, sometimes ally, uh, named Starling from, from the comic books. And Starling is in this, our version of Starling is in this yeah. prequel novel. So again, we, we go back to the core material and then we present it as, as something new. So that's what I'm working on behind the scenes is, I'm working with all of our, all of the different studios that work on all the different games we have cooking, um, and uh, we just talk about um, we talk about the characters. It's so fun. It, we we do what we did when we were 12 and 13 years old. We talk about our favorite heroes, what makes them important, what makes them different, what are their goals, what are their motivations, um, who are they as people, what do they want, what are their challenges, um, in, in in the mighty Marvel manner, what, what what's their feet of clay, yeah. what what makes them human. What are the things they have to overcome physically and psychologically? Um, and then, then, and then their antagonists, who, who are the villains? What do they want? Why do they think they're doing the right thing? And how can we put them on a collision course in a game um, that makes you feel part of the Marvel universe and makes you feel like these heroes and want to discover more of the universe? So mobile games, VR, console games, it's all in the works. There's so much fun stuff. Um, and I, I, here's a big thing I want to say. I want to, I want to thank all the true believers out there. This year was unlike any other year. 
very challenging, very difficult. Um, we're very lucky at Marvel Games. We're able to 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 work and create things um, that 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 people want, um, and and hopefully um, through this year of of darkness, they found some moments of light in the games that we've made, and and they and hopefully they've brought people together. Uh, we, we really think the Spider-Man games bring whole families together to play together uh, on the couch or even in, in uh, separate locations and, and play and talk about uh, the experience. Um, and we really think Miles Morales is a, a great positive story set during the holiday time um, that's all about family and, and finding your family. Um, and that's what's underneath all the costumes and the action and the web spinning, which is great. We love it. Underneath that, you know, what we always say, what's our story about? And this story is about family. Uh, and that's what Wings of Fury is about as well, finding, finding your family. Um, so I wanna thank the true believers out there this year for sticking with us, um, um, for reading our Marvel comics, for playing our Marvel games. We thank you um, and we wouldn't be here without you. And so we really appreciate it. We hope everyone stays safe. Uh, and we know that um, better days are ahead of us in 2021. Well said. Hard agree, mate. That that uh, I couldn't have said it better myself. And uh, I thought, thought you put it together in a, a, a that that sincerely expressed that in a very Marvel centric way as well, which is brilliant. Thank you so much for your time today, Bill. Uh, thanks for carving out the time from your schedule to talk to us. Thank you, Andrew. It was awesome. Uh, had a great time. I always love meeting fellow true believers and uh, and geeking out on on our stories, on our Marvel stories. And uh, so it's always fine. Now, now I feel I have, an, I have another friend across the pond. As it oh, were. yeah. Big time. All, always. Yeah, always. Keep on facing front, mate. And we'll see you soon. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, True Believers. Bye-bye.